Glenohumeral injections are generally performed for conditions such as glenohumeral osteoarthritis, inflammatory conditions such as rheumatoid arthritis, capsulitis, and frozen shoulder. Injections can be done anteriorly or posteriorly. Anterior injections are fairly straightforward and are done between the coracoid process and the humeral head. However, there is a theoretical risk of neurovascular injury, so non-experts will generally avoid this route. In this video, I will demonstrate the posterior approach to glenohumeral injections. There are a few key landmarks when injecting the shoulder. Locate the spine of the scapula. This becomes the acromion process laterally. Identify the posterior corner and the anterior corner of the acromion. You should also appreciate the coracoid process. This is a bony prominence just beneath the distal end of the clavicle and just medial to the humeral head. For posterior glenohumeral injections, have the patient sit at the edge of the bed with the arm hanging off. Identify the posterior corner of the acromion, then mark a spot about two finger breadths inferior and two finger breadths medial to this. Be sure to use a retractable pen. These injections should always be done using sterile technique. Scrub the injection site and then clean in an outward fashion. Here I am using a mixture of 2% chlorhexidine and 70% isopropyl alcohol. Alternatively, you can also use providing solution followed by alcohol. Local anesthetic can be applied to the skin and subcutaneous tissue down to the capsule of the joint using a 25 gauge needle. The experienced clinician may forego this if a quick injection is anticipated. If you anticipate difficulty or expect to aspirate fluid which would take longer, then you should definitely infiltrate local anesthetic first. Here I have a mixture of 60 mg of Depomedrol mixed with 2% xylocaine to a volume of 5 ml and I am using a 22 gauge 1.5 inch needle with the bevel facing upwards. You can also use up to a total volume of 10 ml. Advance the needle through your mark directed anteriorly and medially aiming for the coracoid process to a depth of about 3 to 4 centimeters. Always aspirate to ensure you're not in a blood vessel. Then inject the solution. This should go in smoothly. If there is any resistance, then withdraw and adjust the needle to avoid tissue injury. Finish off by drying the site and applying a bandage.